Welcome to MCN, I'm Michael Nees, one of the road testers uh, and this is my long term test bike for 2010 Kawasaki Z1000. Now I've ridden this quite a few times with my road testers hat on uh, and I know that it's a superb machine, probably the closest Japan's ever come to producing a true super naked. This is a lot like a ZX10 with the fairing stripped off, very very fast, very aggressive, uh, nice handling but the question is what's it like to live with? But this engine is uh, immensely powerful, it makes a true 131 horsepower at the rear wheel uh, and it's good for a genuine 150 mile an hour as well. But there's a few little things about the gearing which uh, are a little bit strange. Uh, it's very very short geared so in top gear at motorway speeds uh, it's doing about 8,000 revs which is really high. I would think about um, changing the gearing on it but then you'd lose some of its acceleration so I need to kind of figure out what to do about that. The other thing is the uh, fuel range. Uh, it's only got a 15 litre tank now and even steady away on the motorway you get about 90 miles before reserve comes on and then about another 25 miles to panic before you get to a petrol station. The other thing about the fuel gauge is up to 50 miles, it stays full on and then suddenly it just drops like a stone. One of the reasons the Z1000 is so close to a European Super Naked now as well as the immense amount of power it's got is the fact that it does handle really really well but there's still a lot of room for improvement. Fast corners, uh, riding hard, especially when it's bumpy, the bars uh, flap a lot and the bike's quite unstable uh, and the suspension's a little bit soft. So, at the front end, uh, it's got fully adjustable forks, so we should be able to help that. I've put a cable tie down on the fork leg so I can adjust my preload to suit. Uh, I think it had a lot of preload to start with, so I'm basically backing it off and off and off and off. Uh, at the rear, it's not so easy. The shock has only got rebound adjustment and preload so uh, that could be a bit of a limiting factor and the other thing is even though the bike was brand new when I got it the shocks obviously brand new it's impossible to get the uh, uh, C spanner on the preload nut and actually get it to turn so I had to take it to a Kawasaki dealers Dave Fox in Ramsgate to basically get them just to, to tap it loose so I could set the rear preload and get rid of all of the sag One thing with the Z1000 is it feels very very heavy, especially uh, compared to a sports bike. Now Kawasaki claim that it weighs 218 kilos, fully fueled, ready to go. Uh, the Japanese manufacturers have been giving uh, ready to go weights for the last year or so. They used to give completely dry weights, which never were that accurate. So I was a bit suspicious if it does actually weigh 218 kilos. So I actually took it um, to a local bike shop, got it put on their scales, brimmed the tank and it is 218 kilos. So, Kawasaki are telling the truth, but it's still a very, very heavy bike. But the first and actually only thing I've changed on this bike are the tyres. The standard Dunlop D210s, which come on UK bikes like this, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of. They come standard with the R1 as well. They haven't really got a terrible amount of grip or feel, especially the, at the front end. So I've replaced those Dunlops with a different set of Dunlops. These are the firm's new GP Racer D211s. They're basically fast road stroke track day tyres. Uh, they're absolutely fantastic. These are in the endurance compound, so we're going to get a nice lot of wear. I know from the previous generation tyres that I run, you get a good two, three thousand miles out the rear. Also, this tyre is a 55 profile rather than the standard 50. Slightly taller give slightly sharper steering. Right, the Z1000 comes in three colours and I reckon I've probably got the best one. The other two are plain black, brown with a snakeskin seat, uh, but this one uh, reminds me of an orange flavoured trifle, which is uh, why I've given it a nickname, a trifle. It looks quite uh, unique. The only thing is this white rear seat uh, is getting grubby already and I reckon it'll be impossible to keep clean. Well, the clocks on this Z1000 uh, are a little bit gimmicky. They're three-way adjustable, so you can get them tilted exactly towards you, uh, which once you've done it, you never touch again. Uh, and also, they've got yellow face, uh, face to it, which means you can't really see the green indicator light very well. Uh, but I would have preferred a clocks with more information. It's got very basic information on it. Uh, and also, you've got to adjust them actually by leaning across and touching the clocks, old school, rather than with buttons like a lot of more modern bikes. Right, so I'm going to be living with this for the rest of the year and the question in my mind is, is it going to be as good as a Ducati Street Fighter I ran last year? And that's a superb bike and sets the bar really, really high. 
but the Z1000 is a lot, lot cheaper. It's only eight and a half thousand pounds. I'm sure it's going to be good fun, uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, living with it over the summer.